Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, I'll be taking the part two of the group or the subkingdom, the protozoa. We're talking about the clad amoeboid protozoa as well as the excavator. Now, the amoeboid protozoa, as you know, it has the free living protist, though there are few parasitic species possessing pseudopodia for movement as well as for capturing food. Yeah, their body is usually covered with the plasma membrane or the shell. The pseudopodia, as we know it, are of various types in this amoeboic word, protozoa. And they include the lobopodia, which is blunt, you can see, the philopodia, the azopoda, as well as the reticulopodia. The diagram of the various types is actually displayed on the board. And difference please take note of the difference you can see that the lobopodia is blunt and usually aid in engulfing food you can see the azopodia around the axis so please take note of the diagram the, the, of the differences the characteristics of the amoeboid protozoa their body is usually covered with either plasma membrane or shell i've also mentioned the fact that they are mostly heterotrophic Organism, their mode of reproduction, as we know it, is, can be by binary fusion, multiple fusion. Other forms of reproduction are also involved. Please take note, then they can be uninucleated. They can possess one nucleus, they can possess two nucleus binucleated, they can possess multiple nucleus, as in some cases. But take note of the fact that even if they possess multiple nucleus, it's of one type, so they are monomorphic. In terms of what nucleus, unlike the uh, Silophora that are what dimorphic dimorphism, which is uh, having nucleus of various types or of different types. The various phyla under, or the different phyla under the amoeboid protozoa include the phylum amoebozoa. The phylum amoebozoa, they are actually a group of organisms that possesses pseudopodia. Their outer cover is they are shapeless and the attack of is usually of what the plasma what membrane they are heterotrophic the pseudopodia extend out and it's actually used for what locomotion they are protoplasm or their cytoplasm as we know it is divided into two their cytoplasm or their the cell is divided into two their protoplasm is divided into the endoplasm as well as the ectoplasm Take note, these various organisms involved in this group, uh, some of the organisms in this category is actually the popular organism called the, the amoeba. So I would like you to take this as assignment, the morphology as well, uh, write in details on the morphology and the biology of Naglera, Ferlari, Fowleri, as well as this organism. Take note of the characteristics of the group amoebozoa in this list, in this group of organisms. Right. Another um, group under the amoeboid protozoa is the superphylum rizaria, which comprises of the foraminiferans, the radiolera, and the secozoa. The foraminiferans, as you know, they are amoeba like unicellular proteins that some of them have shell, possess the secret shell or test, and in some cases they are usually referred to as well the, the amoid. Amoeba or the amoeba with what shell. They possess a lot of what fossil species as you know them. They are actually what microscopic. The diagram of various foraminiferans are displayed on the board. Right? We have another group called what the radiolaria. Please take note before I move forward. The foraminiferans they also possess pseudopodia and they also possess pseudopodia, and the pseudopodia extend out of the shell in some cases to a what capture organism. The nucleus remain within what the shell. All right. Other uh, characteristics are displayed on the board. The next group is what the radiolaria. They are, the radiolaria are a group of zooplankton protozoa. This group actually possess the azopodia, the azopodia, the diagram of azopodia I've displayed before, possess what the azopodia and their cytoplasm or their protoplasm comprise of what the ectoplasm as well as the endoplasm, various essential cell organs such as the nucleus and all that are actually found in the 
and do what? Plasm. And do plasm. The class under the radiolaria include the polycystinia, the acantheria, as well as the last class indicated there on the board. Examples of the radiolaria are actually displayed on the screen. The next phylum is the phylum secozoa. They are actually single cell proteins. The group includes most amoeba and flagellates that feed by means of uh, the philopsidopodia. The group, you can see the diagram of a secozoa or the board, and in some cases, this group are divided based on whether the pseudopodia uh, develop into philopodia or whether they develop into reticulopodia. The philos and the reticulopodia um, uh, secozoa are displayed on the board. From the diagram of the secozoa, you can see that they do not have true mouth or cytostome. Please take note. The last uh, clad is the excavator from the term excavate because they possess an oral groove that looks like a place that is excavated. All right? So these are asymmetrical single cell proteins that possess, that have a feeding word groove excavated from one side. They have a parasitic species. They possess, they also possess some photosynthetic what species or they can be heterotrophic or autotrophic as we put it all right the phyla in this group include the euglenozoa we have the parabesalia and the last phyla which is the heterologosia all right let's start with the euglenozoa which is actually a glass a large group of the flagellate what protozoa their characteristics include the fact that they are unicellular. We all know the euglena viridis. They usually possess a flagella for locomotion. Majority of them, or many species, are actually free living, while some may be parasitic. They have eye spot, which is sensitive to light. You can see the diagram of euglena, and you can see the eye spot there. This is sensitive to light. Now, these eye spots actually make them move towards light source. You can um, take an assignment. Do this assignment. Just draw a large diagram. You do is display on the board. Draw a large diagram of euglena. Then highlight the characteristics of euglenozoa. This will make you understand the characteristics better. And you don't need to think before highlighting some of these features. Even their outer covering, as you can see from the diagram, is it has a kind of pellicle as its outer covering. The next phylum is the phylum Parabesalia, all right, which actually possess a semi-functional uh, mitochondria, which is their hydrogenosome or hydrogenosome. Some of these species are actually, or most of these species are actually commensal. Why we have the parasitic species, which is actually the Trichomonas virginalis. We all know this as a parasite that causes disease in human beings. And the last phylum for the excavator is actually heterolobosiae or the peculozoans, which are actually colorless. They are non photosynthetic proteins that are unicellular. They actually alternate between the form of the amoeboid form and the flagellate word form. They actually assume, they assume the amoeboid form usually when the, the food is plentiful in the environment or when there is plenty of resources in the environment. Why they assume the flagellate form when there is need for what? Fast movement or locomotion. All right? In some, the form cyst in some cases. All right? Please take note of that. Example of this include the word Pecolomonas species, the Lyromonas species and all that. This is actually the basic things that you need to know about the protozoa group. If you have any question as usual, you can drop in the comment section or anything you don't understand, drop in the comment section or send a mail to biology access. You will definitely be replied. Thank you.